here we are once again, and today we have Mayor Andrea Wallace in the house. Mayor, thank you. Thank you always oh, for, ta welcome. for taking the time to speak with us, regardless if you are in office or out of office. Right. You always take the time and you always answer our questions. Well, it, it, that's, isn't that how it's supposed to go? <laughs> you ask the questions, I answer them. So. You tell me. <laughs> I was never a mayor. No, well, it's but, all about transparency, and everybody knows I'm an open book, so if you ask me a question, I'm going to answer the question. Regardless if you are in a press conference or not? Regardless. Regardless. Yeah. You, you, you've, you've been at my interviews before, my press conference before. Uh, have I ever not answered your question? Never. Yeah. Now, Mayor, before we go ahead with uh, our okay. subject, I have to clear certain things. Have you ever paid me? to talk nice about you and bad about anybody else. You're telling me now I wish that was an option. <laughs> Did that? You know? No, 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 no. You know, um, I, I have a lot of respect for you because of the simple fact that you do call it as it is, it is as what you see it, you know? And, and it never bothered me. Um, you ask the questions that uh, some people don't want to answer. You ask the hard questions, and some people just get upset about that. I don't get upset about it because I don't have nothing to hide, and, and I always want to be transparent and let people know exactly what's going on. Some people never even uh, realize, uh, or some people just get upset to it with some of the things I say uh, because it's straightforward and it's the truth, you know. And you, you've never. I've never paid you. You've never asked me for pay. I did ask you once if I could um, put a banner on your website, and I think uh, that's about it. And we did it. Yeah, and we did it, and that, that well, was so it. I gave you a service, and you paid for the service. Exactly, which I do for everybody else. You know, Black Westchester, other magazines, other uh, sites. You know, I buy, you know, bought banners on everybody's when you're campaigning. So you want to get on everybody's uh, a site. But you know, Mayor. But I can tell you that neither you, neither the mayor before you, or the one before you ever paid me to talk negative about anyone or positive about anyone. And even if that offer came up, I wouldn't accept it, and I would let them know because it was unethical. And I believe I spoke with you about this in the past. Yeah, you did. Okay, when somebody approached us, okay, yeah. well, didn't approach me directly, but approached somebody who I know to speak negatively about you in order to benefit somebody. And they, and they did. And they did. Well, <laughs> I didn't. You know, but yeah. I didn't, and I am not responsible for what other people do and say. I'm responsible for what I do and say. And I always make it clear that I don't endorse right. and I don't oppose anyone. Right. Every time you called me, I was there. Every time the prior mayor called me, I was there. Every right. one time the prior mayor called me, I was there. Right. I covered the story. Right. I, I called you and I spoke to you even when I was council president or just regular council. Correct. So I never had a problem with speaking with you. Uh, I've never um, had an interview with you that you uh, were disrespectful or anything to me. So I, Or I never saw it as that. Uh, or I've never been feeling disrespected by any of your questioning either. So, you know, many people... They have their questions because they want uh, to get out the information that maybe other people want or some other people may be asking about. Uh, and no matter how foolish the question may be, you, you know, sometimes you have to ask it. And, That's exactly. And, I, and I, it doesn't bother me. You know, sometimes I, and I'll tell people too, that's a stupid question, you know, yeah. but if it's a stupid question, I'll give you the answer to the stupid question anyway. Exactly. This comes about, Mayor, because I contacted you when your picture frame was removed. Yes, the first time and the second time. The second time. The second time, yeah. Once I posted that, which I named no one, I accused no one of removing it, I said, maybe a ghost did it. I had someone from the current administration, uh, Daniel Terry, came and said that was fake news. Picture was never removed. That wasn't fake news. It wasn't fake news. No, it wasn't. I knew, you knew, he knew. The picture was removed. And because of that, my interview with the mayor was canceled by him, saying that 
I'm asking questions that I shouldn't be asking, and I'm posting things that I shouldn't be posting. Before you even call me, I got at least a dozen calls uh, about the picture. People were calling me, say, hey, they took your picture down, they, they removed the picture, or whatever. Um, I only made one call about the picture, and that one call was to Lisa Copeland. Because I was in City Hall in the clerk's office getting some paperwork for some street closures um, the day before. And she made a joke. She came into the office. She made a joke. She says, yeah, well, you know, your picture's up there, but I'm going to be taking your picture down. So when they took it down like the next day, or I got a dozen calls or whatever, I just text Lisa. I said, so you really took my picture down? And she said it wasn't her, you know, and then she said she actually stopped the people from taking it. Um, and it was in the, they put it in the council office. And when I asked her who, who took it, you know, she told me who it was. And I don't have no uh, doubts about what, what it, you know, who did it, you know, which was uh, Andrea Ayers. And I put out the names and, and Rob Richards. And she took the picture. They were trying to take it and put it in their car and take the picture. The, the, you know, the uh, painting. So um, Lisa did stop them. Lisa had them put it into the council office. And then I remember uh, Damani Bush uh, went and put it back. Because it was, I don't understand why they're focusing on playing games with that instead of doing the work for the people. You know, um, this that was the second time, the first time I got a dozen calls that they took down the picture. And I'm just like, it's just childish. It's just childish. They should be focused on moving the city forward, not a picture. I, I agree with you. I agree with you. Well, we asked the current mayor about that. She actually said that she was the one who ordered the picture back. Now, she ordered the picture back, but then her administration said that the picture was never removed in the first place. So how you order something back that was never <laughs> removed? That's it. Let me say this. I... I um I know when I spoke to Lisa, she was not lying about it. And she told me where the picture was. And uh, Damani Bush, who put the picture back, knew where the picture was. So I guess Lisa had it put back because she did stop them from taking it. So I did thank her for stopping them from taking it. You know, I said, if the picture's that big of a deal, I'll take it and put it in my house. You know, it, it's not a big deal. But it's not the point of being a big deal, Mayor. It's a point that is not right. You're right, and it's it's disrespectful, um, and especially you know it was disrespectful to take down Ayaboni's picture because remember Ayaboni, regardless, they call her the acting mayor. She wasn't the acting mayor; she was the mayor at the time. There is no acting mayor unless you unless someone is coming back, and you're there for a temporary moment. Ayaboni yeah. stayed there; she was mayor for a year and a half, up to the election. You know, she is the first woman mayor, regardless of how she got there. Uh, so people just have to respect that and not say that, oh, it was the council that put her there. It's not the council that put her there. It's the charter that put her there. Because if somebody dies, if Trump dies today, is Pence going to be the acting president of the United States? Or is going he going to be, be the president. Thank you. Because there's nobody coming back until the election time. That's correct. So it happened with Lyndon Johnson when he became... It doesn't... He, Lyndon Johnson wasn't the acting president of the United States. <laughs> he was the president of the United States. So people need to stop with all of that nonsense and stop with the games. Because it's, it's... I don't know. It's People just want to be important, I guess, and do things. And but you know, Mayor, when you focus on childish stuff like that, you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing for the city of Mount Vernon. Yeah, you know, when I was growing up, I had a boss that taught me all about business a long time ago, maybe about 30 years ago, before I even went into my own business, because he told me to go into business and stop working, you know, uh, for other people, because he always told me, don't have a job, because it means just over broke, because by the end of the week, you're out of money, you're waiting for the next paycheck. So, but every time I used to see him, and if you were standing around, you know, his 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 whole idea was if you're standing around, uh, you must not have enough to do. And he would find something for you to do. So when everybody walked in the office, you know, whenever he Everybody's walked in the office, if I wasn't busy, I would grab a book. I'd be like, oh, I'm looking up something. I'm working. I'm working, <laughs> researching. You're doing your thing. <laughs> doing my thing. Doing my thing. But, you know, that, that's what I say to others. If, you're, if you got time for that, you must not have enough real work to do. So, you know, focus on the real work. 
and, and, and leave all of that nonsense alone. No, Mayor. Transparency. It's extremely important. Okay? And yeah. sometimes when you do things that uh, create doubt that you're being trans not transparent, right. then you actually not because you create that illusion. Right. When you were mayor, I've seen your live streams all the time. Right. You were there. Watch it. See the reaction. Not right. that I would have to search for that video on YouTube later on. It's easy accessible as right. it's happening. That has been turned off from the city hall. The current mayor says that she sees no added value to the live stream. Do you agree with her? No, I disagree. That's why I kept it going after um, Mayor Thomas started it. I think it was a good thing that he did. Um, everything that he did that was good, I kept it going because there was no reason to remove anything. He started City Fest. It was a great thing going. We kept it going um, and certain things that he was doing. Um, like I said, you, you, you can't say that everything he did was bad because it wasn't. He had a lot of great ideas and that was one of them. Uh, there's a lot of people that would love to attend these meetings and know what's going on in the city but don't have access and being that we don't have our public access channel up to be running this stuff so that everybody could know what's going on in the city and be transparent that was a great method um, and when you know I got in you know the first thing they asked me was like oh, are we gonna continue these live streams I said absolutely you know it should be live stream at every meeting including this every city council meeting everything so that people that can't take the time to go to city hall and sit there and who has time to sit there at 9 30 in the morning people are at work so at least if they're at work or on their way to work or on the train or whatever they can access it by by uh, social media and see it and, well, and and be able to know what's going on in their city it's not beneficial if you're trying to hide something right okay then it's not beneficial he and Yonkers I have uh, interviewed most politicians, right. from the mayor down to everyone. Mm -hmm. We have a cyber, cyber town hall, actually we just had one, right. and it's extremely positive. The feedback from okay. everyone, mm -hmm. it's positive. We have thousands of views, people that maybe don't have the time, as you said, right. to uh, go to a meeting or watch a video later on because they have to be with their families. So they watch it right there and then. So when somebody tells me that they turn it off because they don't see any added value to it, my, my mind goes, hmm, why? Well, I always said, I, when you have these kind of things, you have to be able to take the good with the bad. There's going to be some bad. There's going to be some arguing. I know people say, hey, I don't want to see the arguing on, 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 on uh, social media or whatever, but it's healthy. It's, it's not arguing, it's, it's debating, it's difference of opinions. If we were all the same, what kind of world would we have? Exactly. You know, and we have to learn to respect other people's opinions. And that's the problem with uh, a, a lot of the things that go on in City Hall and around Mount Vernon. Uh, if you have an opinion, you know, people don't agree with it, now you're my enemy. You know, rather than being able to agree to disagree and do it respectfully. So not everybody's gonna have the same uh, 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 ideas. Uh, if we look at a picture on a wall, a painting on a wall, everybody's gonna walk away with something totally different with that painting. Everybody's not gonna walk, walk away with the same exact thing because everybody uh, is a different individual. You know, so you gotta, you gotta expect different opinions and then you have to learn to bridge that gap and work with those people and then find a common goal or something within um, reason that everybody could work together. So you look at the uh, broadcasting, it should be it should be broadcast all the time and then let the public decide. Well, that's what we do here. It's open policy, you know. As I told you from the beginning, when I first met you, I don't support or I don't endorse you, but right. I'm all for the people. We project, we broadcast, and we let the people decide. Right. The same should be for Mount Vernon. Absolutely, absolutely. You have nothing to hide. You broadcast those uh, live streams as they have being broadcasted yeah. until now. Yeah. Now, I don't know if I should congratulate you, if I should blame you. I really don't know. <laughs> but what, I, what I do this time? Uh, I'm going to tell you what you did. 
or with the, what is alleged that she did. Okay. I asked the current mayor mm -hmm. about the raise. Okay. About the raise she requested, not just for her, but for other people. And she said that she did not request the raise. I disagree with her. But she points that she submitted your budget that included the raise. But my point of my point is even if it was your budget, it became her budget when she submitted. And if she felt like those raises were not supposed to be there, you could have removed them. No? The raises for mayor and, and council and controller, I didn't put any of those raises in there. You didn't? No. And my budget was up there so everybody could see it. That's why I made it transparent so everybody could look at it. I didn't have, the only thing I did was I gave raises to the law department. I raised everybody in the law department. And the reason why is because we were spending so much money on outside attorneys. You know, you want, I wanted to give more money to our attorneys, which would benefit the city because we won't have to put out so many more cases and add on additional attorneys. So if you're paying an attorney $100,000 compared to outside services that when you finish up a case, they're paying $250,000 to cover that case, it's a win. So you're saving $150,000. So that's what I did as far as as far as raises all these other raises those were well, those were not my raises you sure i'm positive Could there you may be that, a little you forgot something maybe you forgot there. something no 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 i first of all i would not raise the mayor's salary i would not propose raise the, proposal i wouldn't ra yes i wouldn't propose a raise for the council the mayor the controller pretty much everybody knows the reason why because i've always said to to everybody Raises should be performance-based. Nobody's performed to the satisfaction of the people that we represent. You don't deserve more money for doing a terrible job. You know, if you was in corporate America, you'll be fired. So, so why I, raise, give you a raise? No, you can't take a raise before you even get in office and show people what you can do. You think you know? she asked for a raise? What, since she was the one who proposed that budget. That raise was put in by her and the controller. This is what the controller had told me, that they put the raises in, because it wasn't in my budget. You can go back and look at the both budgets. Mayor. It wasn't proposed. Two people cannot be telling the truth about the same story in a different ways. If the, if, if the conclusion were the same, then okay, so both yeah. sides are giving the same story. Yeah. But both sides are not telling the same story, so one side must be lying. Let me tell you. I, I, well, I, I don't want to say lying. Not telling the truth. I like the way, uh, you know, Mike Bloomberg states it, you know. Tell Mike us. Bloomberg says, uh, in God we trust. Everybody else got to bring facts and documents. <laughs> okay? And the facts and documents will prove it. Just go online or, well, it's not there online probably anymore. But you can find a copy uh, uh, maybe at the clerk's office because everything is foilable. Um, I still keep copies. I have copies in my file at home uh, just in case something like this ever came up and somebody says, okay, well, where's the proof? I, I have the facts. You know, I have the facts, but I, I, didn't, do, I didn't do any of that. And I don't believe that, uh, I think that council and control and all of that should get raises. But first, you have to generate the money. Not from the taxpayers, but figure out how to move the city forward so that the city can be making money to generate that kind of revenue that will uh, really be able to say, okay, we can get a raise because our work that we've done and our policies and, and legislation and, uh, has brought in X amount of millions of dollars. So out of that, then, then it's good. It's arguable. If you work for a private company, you know, and you are saving this company hundreds of thousands of dollars, you can say, listen, at the end of the year, I saved this company a million dollars. I would like a raise. That's seeable. But if you lost a million dollars, are you going to go and ask for a raise? Mayor, every, you know, in business, that must be a business reason why you buy this or why you invest in that or why you give an employee a raise. It right. must justify. But it would be difficult to understand that you just got hired 
you've been on the job for 20 some days. No, you haven't even started. You haven't even started. <laughs> and one of the things that you're already asking, regardless, re regardless if that budget was already there when you came in, mm -hmm. you check the budget and you say, okay, this is right, this is wrong. We take this one, we take that one. Right. But that wasn't taken. If that was to be true, and you submit the proposal that gives you a raise without really no justification, especially when you become a mayor of a city that you know is struggling financially. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, if you know the city's struggling, you know better than to give yourselves a raise on top of that. You know that the taxpayers in Mount Vernon are overtaxed and underserved already. How could you ask for more money? It's unjustifiable. You just, you can't. So you have to, if that's what you came in on the job, then that's what you get. That's what it is. That's what it's about. Trust me, when I was mayor, I lost a whole lot of money being the mayor because I couldn't do my other business. But you knew you know, what you were getting but into. But I knew what I was getting into. I was willing to take the, uh, take the loss and be able to say, okay, I may be losing here, but I'm contributing to the lives of others over here. So um, it's a balance in life because... You know, you got to work as hard as you play and you got to uh, you got to give as much as you make. You know, you got to be able to be giving to others because that's what it's about. Life's about servicing others. You know, we don't live here on this planet by ourselves. Now, Mayor, during Mayor Richard Thomas administration, yeah. we had this legal battle going on, chaos in Mount Vernon. Right. You were became mayor. We had a little bit of that when you were mayor. People that supported you to remove Mayor Thomas then didn't support you after. <laughs> oh, are you talking about the council's takeover? And That's coup? correct. That's yeah. correct. Mm -hmm. So we had the chaos there. Now we have another chaos. People of Mount Vernon are not happy. They are not saying, wow, finally we get a mayor that is transparent, that talks tells us what's going on. On the contrary. Hold up. They had one. <laughs> I'm talking about now. Yeah. Okay. You always spoke with us. Right. Maybe the question didn't, you didn't like the question, but you didn't tell me not to a ask this question or that question. Right. Just like today, I come here, I don't know what you're going to ask me. You have no I idea. Have no idea, but whatever you ask, I'm going to answer. That's transparency. Yeah. And telling me that you will not give me another interview because I asked a question that you didn't like, it's no bueno. You ask a lot of questions. I don't say that I don't like them or like them or whatever. They're not all the greatest questions in the world. But, you know, that doesn't stop me from having another conversation with you. You know, um, and, and like I say, all of those tough questions only make you stronger, make you better. There's no growth in, in, in life without the complications or without the struggle. You know, that's the only way you're going to grow. So the, I want to hear the tough questions. I, I want people to throw the tough stuff at me um, because that's how you keep on growing. If life was so simple, like my father used to say, if life was uh, great every day, how would you know you were living? And, it, and, and it's, it's, a, it's a point. So what you have to do is you have to be able to take the good with the bad. And like I said, failure and all of those things, it's good. Don't be afraid to fail. Don't be afraid, you know, of, of how you look failing or this or that. You have to take that risk because I would say that's the way to grow. You know, you think the Wright brothers uh, uh, didn't fail on their way. What a afraid of failure. failure did, you know, everybody fails. But there is something I would say, like my father used to tell me. He said, don't be mad at failing. He says, because you, at this point, probably failed so much, there's no more way to mess up. <laughs> next time it's good. <laughs> the next time it's good, you know? So uh, you just got to take the good with the bad. Now, Mayor, on a personal basis, sometimes I don't, when I look at myself, I don't see certain mistakes that I have done, and except after the mistake is done. Then I say, oh, I should have done it differently. I should yeah. have done that. Or if I'm looking at somebody else, it's easy for me to define and determine the mistakes yeah. right there and there. You as a private citizen, looking at the current administration now, 
what are the things that you think are being done wrong or should be done differently? Well, I'm not going to, you know, she hasn't been there long enough. I'm not going to... Long enough to ask for a raise. (laughs) But you know what? I'm not going to knock the administration. You know, and like I said, the way I governed is different from how she governs. You know, so I can't say, you know, that I'm right and she's wrong because really there is no right and wrong. There's only, you know, my way and her way or other people's way. So however she chooses to govern uh, will determine what the people say. But it's not for me to judge. Ju- it's not for on. me to judge. Let, let's, let, let's, let's get serious in, in, about this one. Yeah. I'm not asking you to judge her, but you have an opinion. You said to me once that you love Mount Vernon. Absolutely. Okay? And I'm sure that you have an opinion about how things are done or an opinion about how things should be done. Oh, well, if you're saying that, how things should be done. That's what I'm asking you. know, and I could say how I vision it, and, and if it was myself, okay. how I would do it, I would, I would focus more on um, bringing in, like I always told everybody, more development, business, but, but bringing in, uh, not focused on trying to bring in housing and all, focus on bringing in corporations, business, jobs, job creation. That is the, that is the key. To, to knocking down crime and, and to getting people to move up in life. Uh, so we need to have more programs um, to be able to train folks and training programs. And I'm starting to go back to doing that in the construction industry where I'm training some of the folks again and starting my training programs to put people to work. Because I always say the best way to deter crime is to give people a job. That is like the best in the world. And it not only helps the community, in that sense, these people become, you know, more productive. They feel better about themselves. The money that they make, they're spending in the community, which is now helping the stores, which is also going back to the sales tax, you know, and everything when they buy a house, it's going back to the real estate uh, uh, property tax. And so you want to create uh, economic wealth. That is how I was focused. That's what I was focused on mostly with trying to bring in businesses Uh, to offset the taxes because Mount Vernon 88% of the taxes come from the homeowners which is backwards it should be coming from the business instead of the homeowners and it's always been an issue back in the day Mount Vernon was one of the you know industry hubs you know you had everybody here We, we lost reliable we lost all these different companies that went somewhere else uh that should have never happened those companies you have to work with and make sure that they stay here because when they left, they left with 300 jobs. You know, we still have other things that's happening and, and, and you know, Staples is about to leave Mount Vernon. They're gonna shut down. Uh, so that tax base you're losing. So how are you going to, and what are you going to do to reach out to corporate America to bring that uh, business into Mount Vernon, to generate the money, to relieve the taxpayers? Um, because if you just keep on going the way we're going, we're going to we're going to tax out everybody, including grandma. Grandma's going to lose a house. Everybody's going to lose their homes, and it's going to be the the, the place for the for the rich people because they're the only ones that's going to be able to afford it um, to be able to stay here. So we have to start thinking differently. Um, how we've been doing things in the past, it it can't work anymore. And I try to explain that. And to my administration, when I was there, I was explaining people, explaining that to most people. That, uh, yeah, in 1950, you know, it, it was cool to, to, to be able to run one of them formula cars because the fastest race, you know, was speed was about 90 miles an hour going around the track. Try it today with the same car. You have to change the car, right? Because today's cars average about 216. Mm-hmm. How could you compete? We have to evolve and we have to change. I know people don't like to hear the word change. You know, but we have to, I would say, uh, reform, you know, and find different ways of doing things and to become more innovative. And that is going to be the key because the more revenue we have coming in, the better. You know, we shouldn't be taxing the taxpayers. We are already taxed out. So you have to uh, adapt to the current atmosphere. Absolutely. We live in different times. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Today, you know, you can... 
Remember, you have to wait for the mail back then. Now you have email. Before it was fax. Everything keeps changing. Now it's Instagram. Now it's Facebook. So everything is happening in real time today. So it has it has to change, you know. My 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 uncle still has a flip phone. He just won't let it go. And I'm just like, hey, you can't. He's like, I don't need to text. I'm just making calls. That's that's what a, that's what a he, phone is for, right? Yeah, he can't see anything else on it, you know. And every time I ask him something, he's like, I don't know what you're talking about, you know. I'm like, yeah, because you're so far behind. But okay. you have to you have to change. You have to adapt. Mount Vernon's fire department. They just got it. Two new trucks, right? Best in Westchester. Best in Westchester. Yes. State of the art. Yes. I remember you invited me when the first trucks got there. Yes. Current mayor gave you credit. Right. For the trucks that came in. Right. She said it was your work. She just follow up. Yeah. Tell us about uh, why didn't you finish your project? You, how many trucks did you got the day that I was there with you? What, three trucks? Two trucks? Yeah, one that came in, we had, I ordered three trucks. You ordered three trucks? Yeah, okay. which was two two engines and a rescue truck. Okay. Um, because our firefighters, it, Mount Vernon firefighters is the most overworked firefighter department in all of Westchester County. So they answer and take more calls than everybody. But if you're going to have them as the number one firefighting uh, 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 unit going out all over the place uh, they're gonna need the best equipment and they haven't had new fire trucks in 10 years so we had to get the equipment up to date and uh, it, it was uh, folks in the planning department and Sylvia and others who worked hard um, to bulk the money together from the different years to make sure we didn't lose it and we were looking for all kind of federal money, all over grant money, uh, to purchase almost everything. Because my philosophy, and they all know it, was we are not spending tax money. We are going to find free money from someplace else and buy whatever we need. You know, uh, Mount Vernon taxpayers is the last person we want to get anything from. You know, and if if it was if it was up to me, we would have had another zero budget. The only reason we didn't have a zero budget was because we lost another two million dollars in assessed value tax assessment, um, which was taken off the tax roll because of pilots that was given out, which is something that I really disagree with, uh, and how it was done in the past and and giving out these pilots to folks, uh, and not focusing on giving the pilots to businesses to come in. That's going to create jobs and create payroll salary and create, uh, um, you know. Uh, spending our stores with people going out for lunch and shopping in the area and things like that, which is going to produce a lot more money. So, Mayor, I'm going to ask you the question that I was going to ask the current mayor before they shut me down saying that my question was out of context. Yeah. I don't know how they figured that one out before I even ask. Okay. <laughs> so, I'm going to ask you the yeah. question. Now that Mount Vernon has the new trucks. Yeah. Okay. And it's a much safer city now because Absolutely. they have the trucks. How is that going to affect Yonkers in, in the context of mutual aids? Uh, Mount Vernon will not need Yonkers as much as they used to need or it's continue to be the same? Well, me, That was mutual, my question yeah, that they said was out of context. No, well, mutual aid is exactly what it is. Mutual aid. We help each other. Uh, Mount Vernon never has a have a problem going over to Yonkers, going over to New Rochelle, going over to Bronzeville, wherever they have to go. So others shouldn't have the problem with coming over here to Mount Vernon. Because sometimes Mount Vernon guys would be handling it. Because remember, we handle the most fires in all of Westchester County and the most calls. So obviously they're going to be inundated at, at some point. There's going to be some times where they're overwhelmed because they may be out you know, handling fires and mutual aid means, okay, Yonkers may not have to come and, and, and bring their trucks and all of this, you know, uh, uh, and fight a fire at that time. But maybe they might have to say, okay, since all of Mount Vernon Fire Department is out on some major, major fires or whatever, they will come and man the station just in case something else comes in or New Rochelle will come and man the station. Uh, it's done 
two out of all of Westchester. Oh, I understand so. that, but my question is, if you have a municipality that has two trucks right. and, and ten fires, then you're going to need mutual aid. Right. But if you have ten trucks, chances are that you will need less mutual aids. So what I was trying to ask is, with the acquisition of the new trucks, yeah. with the mutual aid be reduced? Of course, if you need it, Yonkers is there. Well, yeah. Or it, vice versa. Hopefully, hopefully, because we can't predict what fires or what's going to occur. So we can't say that because we can say, okay, it's going to reduce it. We had 10 fires this year. Now, I'm just giving an example. We had 10 fires this year, but we got new trucks. But you know what? This year we got 25. Okay. So you can't, it, it's something that you can't really uh, predict. No, you can, but if you are fully equipped. But if you're fully equipped, you're better able to handle these fires. Exactly, and the internal it. fires. Right, and plus you want all the best of the equipment for the people to make their jobs, our firefighters and first responders' jobs easier. So you want to make sure they do have the state of the art equipment. Like police should have the best equipment. They should have the best bulletproof vest. They should have all the best of these things. Um, because these first responders, the better their equipment, the better they can do their jobs. You know, if you have a car that's breaking down every week, you know, if you're on a chase and your car falls apart, which while happens you're in Mount Vernon, which <laughs> happens in the city of Mount Vernon. <laughs> you know, so you you want to make sure they have up to date cars and vehicles that's maintained. It's just like with, with our sanitation department, DBW. Do we need new trucks? Yes, that was something that I was focused on coming after and 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 trying to get later on, um, and making sure that we do have new trucks. But we still don't have our bonding rating back even though we closed the books in the URA the audits still need to be done and it, I don't know what's going on with the process of how uh, things are being done right now but um, that was one of my goals to to reestablish all of these things and to reach out for more grant money to write stuff and to reach out to different folks and different elected officials um, for more uh, money so that we can purchase a lot of these things and, and really going out rather than going in uh, on, on on the taxpayers. Now, now Mayor, during, during Richard Thomas administration, we heard all the bickering between the mayor and the controller. She's not paying, we bring the paperwork, she's turning it back, not paying, no toilet paper, no this, not that. When you became the mayor, we heard some of that too. Right. She's not paying, she's returning the money, the grants that came, that she's right. returning those grants, control it again. With the new administration, we still hear the controller here, the controller this, and the controller that. Yeah, well, this, this, is, this is a saying that my mother used to say, old Jamaican saying, uh, if you're on a journey across the, the, the country uh, or the world, and everybody that you uh, run into, smell like bad cabbage you know you should stop and smell yourself so you have to look at what is and who is um happens to be uh in, in that same position you know uh, the common denominator or the common right. person uh and then you have to look at that and see i didn't have much a whole lot of trouble working with the controller. We did have we did have our uh, disagreements back and forth, and of course we're going to have. You didn't get the, the truck, the fire truck, because she was she wouldn't pay for it. Right. Well, she wouldn't pay for it because uh, the way she saw things um, was totally different than how we saw things, you know. And I, we were dealing directly with HUD. You know, she was thinking that it's a reimbursable grant. It's not a reimbursable grant. This is money that belongs to us. And if they send you the money, it's not reimbursable. Usually reimbursable means you spend it first and then you draw down and ask them for the money when you give them the receipts. They sent us the money already. She sent it back uh, several times, which was, which was a problem. Um, but I'm glad that uh, it, before I left, we were working on getting everything done. You know, uh, Commissioner Morton was working on it with, you know, Sylvia, myself, everyone. Uh, and we did get it to a point where uh, they did send the money back to us, uh, and she held the money. So from that time, I was out of office after, you know, the payment was made to the, for the last fire trucks. So, so the fire but, trucks are there now. But the yeah. conflict and the friction between mayor's office and controller's office, the only fatalities 
between that war is the people of Mount Vernon. Yeah, because it got to a point that if you keep sending that money back, HUD already told us, you know, we sent it back again, we're not getting it back. So I already had put the money together, signed the contract, all the paperwork was done. If we didn't get the money, the free money we had to pay for it, and for somehow the bickering would have lost that money, $1.6 million, we're still on the hook with the contract. The city still has to pay for the fire trucks. Now there's a difference. Either we're gonna pay it from the free money that the feds gave us, or we're going to pay for it by going to the taxpayers and using taxpayers' money. But one way or another, it still would have to be paid. Uh, and that was my argument all the time. Stop playing around with this and stop playing politics and games because all it's going to do is cost the taxpayers $1.6 million. Yeah. So I'm happy that, you know, it was able to finalize and the money was able to be, the check was able to be cut and sent over to the, 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 the company and we're not getting sued. So that's a great thing. But Mount Vernon still has financial issues. Yeah. There is lots of vendors that are not being paid for the service that they already provided. Yeah. And in turn, that hurts the people of Mount Vernon. So how can the city function when vendors refuse to serve you? Are you getting, are they getting new vendors and then not, not pay those new vendors? How is the... I, I don't know because I'm not there. But you but have I, an I, 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 could, I could tell you this much. No, when I was there, uh, I struggled to get people to work for us because people didn't get paid. There was a lot of people with outstanding bills. Uh, I cleared up as many as I can. I did sit down with the controller. Uh, she did, you know, clear up some of the bills, but not all of the bills. Uh, that There's many of them that's still going on. And a lot of these folks are taking us to court at this particular time. Um, what scares me the most about what's happening today in our government in Mount Vernon is the lawsuits. Any of these lawsuits that we were trying to settle and try to move past before I left, uh, when can bankrupt the city? So we have millions and millions of dollars uh, right now that uh, if I, you know, and I don't want to comment on the cases because, you know, I don't want people to. Ongoing litigation. Yeah, I don't want people to use it or anything. But we can't afford to lose these cases. And I know some of them we are going to lose. Um, and and it's, it's sad uh, how things turned out. But we are going to lose and Mount Vernon is going to be up for some challenges. Uh, be it not this year, it will be next year. But uh, we have some very, very serious financial uh, challenges. And if it's not handled in the proper way, uh, I can see a state board coming in. When we asked the current mayor about the money that they got back from HUD, and why did she got the money back from HUD? She said that it's because HUD now trusts the new administration. And that implies <laughs> that they didn't trust the prior one. You were the prior one. They they trust they trust me very very much. I don't have to even ask about that or about my um, credibility. Uh, we got things done. I, I had no problem getting things done. Um, and in the time that I was there for the six months, you see there was no bickering. You see that crime was way down. You see that things were going in the right direction. Everything was being turned around. So I'm proud of what I did and I'm proud of what my administration, prior administration did. And uh, she kept a lot of those folks. You know, I'm proud of what Commissioner Spruill has done in the water department to turn that water department around. You know, we got an audit with the water department, cleaned it up. We put in a lot of different uh, mechanisms now so it can't be used as a slush fund. Uh, and, and all of city government was becoming cleaned up. You know, the only problem we had was those people who were against the cleaning up and, and, and wanted the corruption to continue. Uh, you know, and, and with that being said, that, that's why they tried to remove me. Are some because, of those people still there, Mayor? Absolutely, absolutely. So how you know? can you clear things up if those that were interested in corruption are still there? Well, it's up to the it's up to the voters. It's it, for the voters to start to really focus and, and think about who we're putting in office. 
uh, and who is in office and start to, you know, and that's the reason why I like the actual broadcasting of everything. Because when you broadcast those city council meetings, okay, people could see what's going on. They can see the things that they're saying. When there's no cameras, you'll be shocked at what they're saying. But when there's cameras, people in there, they, their whole demeanor changes because they know people are watching. So we always have to continue to watch and it should all be transparent. Every meeting, board of estimate, real estate, everything should be broadcast live and, and, and actually archived for people, whoever wants to come and foil it, they can get it uh, and, and, and find out whatever is going on in the city. So it shouldn't be um, one of these things where things are done in the dark. Current Mount Vernon city clerk and deputy city clerk, we all understand mm -hmm. that they serve at the pleasure of the council, right. not at the pleasure of the mayor. Right. We interviewed both George and we interviewed Miss Lauren Carter. Okay. And uh, Lauren clearly told us that when she was fired, or um, when they told her her last day, Ajar told her that mayor, the current mayor, knew about it and had some input in it. Why would the mayor have any input in something that she, she should not be involved in in the first place? Secondly, she asked who voted her out and uh, they told her that yes, the majority had voted her out. She got in touch with, uh, with the council and uh, three had no idea of what was going on. Well, if it's five council people and three have no idea, since two are the majority. <laughs> when is two the majority? Yes. When is two the majority? You, you know, let me, let me say this. If a vote was taken uh, back then, they wouldn't need to have a vote taken February 9th, right? Correct. You don't do it twice. And it should be on record and recorded by the clerk. You know, and, and made a part of the official record. Uh, so I don't believe that there was ever any vote before. It couldn't have been. Because even when I spoke to uh, some of the council members, you're right, they knew nothing about it. They didn't know what I was talking about. Because I asked questions, I was asking why, why and what's going on and what's the reason? You know, and they was like, this is news to me. Where'd you get the news from? And I'm saying, I got the news from one of them. Uh, that's telling me this and uh, yeah so obviously someone or somebody or people are are not telling the truth because if you did have a vote back then you wouldn't need another vote today you know Correct. Um, so I really don't know what exactly is going on someone's not telling the truth and um, you got to really go back and peel at the onion to find out what's going on in there. You know, I mean, and I'm not uh, interested in yeah. that. We, <laughs> in we that. always hear both sides of the stories. We tried to contact Councilman Marcus Griffey. I called him. <laughs> Good luck. He did not call back. So we tried to get the other side to know facts, you know. Tell us your version. Did you took a vote? Who voted? When? But uh, unfortunately, we didn't get, we didn't the clerk not would The clerk would know. The clerk would have to be there for the vote. Somebody's got to take the official record, right? The clerk, the clerk, the clerk is did the, not know about no votes. Right, either. so the clerk is the official record keeper for the city Tito of Mount Vernon. So if there's a vote on anything, a vote on something, the clerk needs to know what it is. That's why he's sitting at the council meeting, he's sitting at the BOE meetings, and, and you know, they're taking notes and bringing it back because they have to make official record. So there wasn't, if the clerk don't even know about it, then how could it be a vote? So chaos continues, I guess. Yeah, hopefully it's uh, the learning curve and you know trying to get to figure out how to work with each other. Um, and, and hopefully that'll all change and maybe they'll start to gel, you know? Learn how to work with each other. You knew how to work with them. You were a member of the council. They all supported you until you became the mayor, right? Because they had, they had uh, disagreed with me with my choices of police commissioner and certain things and firings, you know. They and beating you know, contracts exactly. But the bottom line is, 
I'm not there to make friends. I'm not. I'm there for the people of Mount Vernon that voted me in to protect their interests. That's all I care about. And this is what I told the council before. I really don't care about your friendship. I really don't care about being buddy buddies. I'm here for a job to do. The people entrusted in me. So when I'm doing those things, I'm not focused on how your feelings are. I'm focused on moving the agenda forward. So, you know, they, they fought me on Memorial Field when he chopped down the budget, I mean the bubble. Uh, they fought me on the budget. They fought me on, 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 on the firing of, uh, of Zadie or the suspension. They fought me on uh, coming down and cracking, time, cracking down on those with the overtime, abusive overtime and practices. They, so they fought me on everything. Um, and to me, I don't care. Because what I'm looking at is what is best for the people of Mount Vernon. That's who I work for. That's my boss, not them. But don't you ask the question to yourself, why would they oppose all of this <laughs> if this is going to benefit the city of Mount Vernon? What do they have to gain by continuing right. to be the same as what they complain about? And that is, that is the question. That's the million dollar question. Because when you have, you are voting on trying to take me out, and not only voting to try to take me out, voting to pay the former mayor thirty five thousand dollars to 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 give them a letter, okay, that says he's resigning, so they can use that letter in the plot to try to overtake the seat and to do all of these things. That kind of tells you how they're dealing. You know, first of all. The judge already said that the seat was already vacated. Why would you then pay somebody $35,000? What's that behind? What are you trying to cover up? What are you trying to keep quiet? What, are you, what, did, what is it that they didn't want me to see or expose? Because they know I'm fully transparent and they know whatever I see, I'm going to put it out there to the public. So, Maya, if there was corruption, then the corruption was not just on one side. No, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's on one side, but that's for the people uh, to keep their eyes open and, and look at decisions that are being made, why they're being made, how they're being made, and who's making them. And really focus on that, because what, you, what they may project um, is not always what it is. You know? And I say in, in, in City Hall, uh, many of the people there live a life of pretense. You know, uh, and and it's and it's sad. It's sad because they're not who they say they are. It's an optical illusion. Yeah, they they project one thing, but you know they're really something else. But hey, that's the game of politics, right? Shouldn't Almost. be. That's why I, I always say that. Uh, you know, I laugh every time I think about it because you know of what Reggie Lafayette told me one time. You know, what was that? I because I, I told him I said. Uh, we were arguing because I said, I'm a public service. He told me I'm a politician. I said, I'm not a politician. He said, you are a politician. So we're going back and forth for a couple of minutes on this. And I'm telling him why I'm not a politician. And he's convincing me I am a politician. Finally, I get, I get worn out. So I just say, okay, I'm a politician. He says, good, but you're a bad politician. <laughs> and I said, I said you, you wanted to get to that point? He said, yes, because you're a bad politician. You know, you, you don't know when not to say certain things, you know, and, and, and that's always been so my downfall. Because he was blaming you for be, being transparent? You know, it's the way I guess I say things at times, because I'll just, I'll just blurt it out and that's I'll just it. tell the truth. This because, is it. Because I was taught growing up that, you know, to tell the truth, because you don't have to remember the truth. And that's why you can ask me things 10 years from now and I'll give you the same exact answers. One truth. Because it's only one. I don't have time to make up and say, what did I tell this guy? What did I tell that guy? I don't have time for all of that stuff. This is what it is. And that's it. And then when the next person come, I'm going to say, yeah, this is what I said. And the next person, and they're going to, and they usually, you know, sit back and say, you know, he did say that. <laughs> yeah. But I'm not going to hide for it. It's just like... As I governed in City Hall as mayor, everything that happened that was good, yeah, that's me. Everything that happened was that, but went bad, that's me too. 
And I always told my guys, I take full responsibility for all the good and all the bad. So you would never and never have seen me uh, turn around in City Hall and say, okay, well, it was that guy. It's because of my DPW guy or my fire guy or, or the guy in the police. No, you know, the buck stops with me. And I always took that responsibility. You took the responsibility. One of the questions when we posted this topic that you were going to be interviewed today, somebody said, come on, dude, is he running again? He wants to, to be on a spotlight. I said, no, I interview, I have interviewed all the mayors after right. they left office. And you but, called me several times about this. I kept correct. blowing you up. I was like, I don't want to do no interview. That's but correct. You, you used that line on me. You <laughs> was like, come on, what are you What are you saying? I, I, I do all the mayors after exactly. they leave office. You're not going to be no exception. That's what you said. And I was like, oh, okay, all right, I'll come. You know? <laughs> but, Mayor, yeah. any political aspirations in the near future? At this time, no. I'm happy with playing with my, my, my kids right now and being home and going out with the, the, the wife and enjoying that and, and going back into construction and the business and um, so I'm, I'm excited about it. I'm having a good time. Uh, I'm getting ready to start training the youth again uh, because that's what I love doing. You know, I've always loved construction. But I you always love to serve work. your city as well. I, yeah, I do. But th there's other ways of serving, yes. you know, as, as far as, you know, working with the youth and working with uh, uh, some of our uh, uh, people that are not so fortunate, you know, and, and our folks that come back from prison that need a, need a second chance or a break. Um, I, those are the things I, I still like to do because those, that's in our community. And that's going to make a difference because if I can take a person off the street from hanging on the corner and put him into a job, okay, the likelihood of him getting in trouble has now decreased, you know, immensely. You know, so those are the things I'm in, I'm enjoying. You know? So, Mayor, are you telling me on record that you will not run for council president <laughs> on the next election? <laughs> Can we scratch that name or not? As far as far as as far as I know right now, I'm not ready for anything. But I am staying in the political arena because I'm helping other people. You know, like I'm I'm uh, supporting Bloomberg and I'm you know working with the camp over there to help push Bloomberg and uh, Elliot Engel. I'd love to see him reelected, so I'm working on that as well. Uh, and and want to make sure that. Uh, uh, I help out there, and and there's a few other people and some judges. I want to see the uh, district attorney uh, uh, race. You know, I have my opinions and 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 uh, endorsement and things about that race too. So I'm going to stay in as far as helping out and doing what I can do uh, for now. But I'm still, you know, that's uh, not taking up so much of my time, not dominating my time. But right now, I'd like to spend more time with the family and and. Uh, you know, enjoy uh, social stuff, Billy Bees, and all of that kind of stuff. So you are endorsing Mayor Bloomberg. Uh, yes, for president. Who else are you endorsing in the political arena? Uh, I like, like I said, uh, Ingle. Um, I'm really going to be working with. Uh, um, uh, I like Mimi Roca for district attorney, um, and there's a few others. Uh, Karen Bess, uh, you know, yes, reached yes. out. I, I know I, her I personally. Like, yeah, I like her very much. Uh, I think she has her pulse on the community and would make a, a, a fabulous judge. Uh, and I just feel that she's been overlooked um, and, and deserves a shot. And, you know, I would like to see that the people choose and not the party. Right. Karen Best, we have spoken a few times. Don't forget, this platform is yours. We're here to educate the people on who is who in the political arena. We are about to tell them what you, you and the other politicians stand for yeah. in order to give the people information so they can make an educated decision on who is going to represent them best. Abs absolutely. Now, absolutely. in closure, we've gone through the 30 minutes. I think it's yeah. almost an hour. Is there anything, oh, yeah. anything Mayor, that uh, you would like to bring up? anything about your city, whatever that you want to tell the people? Well, I, I wish, you know, and I always pray for my city every day to, for the best, you know. Um, 
although I wasn't born in Mount Vernon, some people still use that and have a, a problem with it. Yes, I was born in the Bronx. I was grew up in the Bronx, but then spent the last 32 years, 33 years here in Mount Vernon, and I love it. I call it home. So this is where I'm at. Um, and I'm going to make sure I do whatever my part is to make sure that Mount Vernon succeeds and moves forward. So, because I'm just saying, if I'm in the city, don't you want to talk highly about your city and where you're from and where you live? Proud of you where you come. Yeah, and I'm proud. Of, I go traveling all over, all, all over the country, all over the world. And when I do, uh, you know, I tell people I'm from, you know, money, money earning Mount Vernon. And it's so funny. I was down at the Super Bowl in Miami. I, I didn't even have to say that because so many people from uh, <laughs> Mount Vernon was down, down there. Was down there, you know, and. and I, I had people, you know, call and reprimand me and say, why are you not here at uh, Sean's inauguration? And, yeah. the, and we the spoke on the phone that. while you were there. Yeah, yeah because I said, listen, um, I've been going to the Super Bowl for the last 17 years or something. I only missed it maybe twice um, in that time. And, you, you know, who puts the ball on the Super Bowl weekend? You exactly. know, that's what I'm saying. And you... My plans were already made long months months. and months ahead of time because you have to, you know, so I can't change it. I'm not going to give up that to to come to a ball. But, you know, I do, you know, I I do wish her the best. Uh, I will always wish her the best and and, and to succeed because if she succeeds, we all succeed. So, you know, my presence being at a ball or at a party or at the the swearing in um, is not uh, it's not disrespect. You know, so I, I hope she knows that, that it, I meant no disrespect because, uh, you know, I did post up congratulations, all of those different things. Um, but even for New Year's, my uh, wife's uh, birthday is on New Year's Eve. So she was celebrating it, in, you know, with her family in Florida and stuff. And how can I not be there? Correct. So I couldn't be there for January 1st because I was in Florida as well. So, you know, I, I, for all of those people who says, oh, he's disrespectful, he didn't show up, it's not because of that. It's because, you know. Other commitments, yeah. and family commitments. Yeah, and trust me, I, I, New Year's Eve used to belong to me. <laughs> <laughs> I used to party. It's a thing of the past. It's a thing of the past. It's, it's you know, and, and it always comes in like August and September. And this is the same line I get. You know what I want to do for my birthday? And that tells me, That's okay, what do I have to do and where are give we me, going? Give me the itinerary, right? <laughs> give me the itinerary and tell me where where we're going, you know, and I just got to go. I'm on the same boat, man. I'm yeah. on the same boat. Guys, with that, we come to a conclusion. And before we leave, I have to say this one more time. If you feel that my credibility, my person can be purchased for a handful of dollars, that people pay me to talk good or bad, bring it up. And I will show you who paid who, or who tried to give somebody an exclusive to talk bad about the mayor here, who that would benefit somebody else. So that's your challenge for today. Thank you for watching and stay yeah. tuned for more. Yes. Thank you, Mayor. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs>